Good morning, good afternoon, good evening all over the world. Dobson 777A here. So we have a terrible, terrible um, weather that's kind of sunk all the way down to deep Texas. And we have millions of people without uh, power across the country right now. And it got so cold that a lot of the energy generation equipment would not work. And I have begged you guys to not rely on the government or industry to get your own energy. And I've shown you what I've been doing, even besides uh, how to invest in everything. I've, I've shown you that I put in wood stoves. I've collected my own wood. I've got propane tanks on my property. I don't rely on natural gas. And it's because I want my power. You know, I put in electrical, solar, generate my own power. So whether it be heat or electrical energy, I've got my own power. And it's important for you to do this, just like wherever possible, even collecting rainwater, you want redundancies. Uh, working in the military industry, I learned that uh, single point failures can kill your mission. And so we used to build like satellite things and uh, you didn't have a capability of bringing them down and repairing them. So you had to have redundancies for things to be able to work uh, for long periods of time. And the same thing should, you should think the same way in your own life because we noticed this past year that we had a lot of uh, things that were basically rationed. Um, we saw runs on toilet paper, we saw limitations in food. Um, so right now you're seeing it, every single thing was predicted by me. I didn't know what the cause was gonna be and I did do a lot of videos on Grand Solar Minimum and I think it's a little early to blame this on Grand Solar Minimum, but these are extreme weather events that are wreaking havoc across the country. And you need to understand that there is nothing anybody can do because the system is so fragile. We do not have any fluff in the system at all. You need to be able to have your own capabilities. You need to have emergency capabilities. In fact, all of my properties here, even my rental properties, I put a propane tank and I put a um, gas logs in the uh, fireplace so that they would have heat in the event that we lost power as what happens with uh, ice storms here. Uh, the particular location that I live, we pretty much get our weather from the Gulf of Mexico, so we're kind of protected from a lot of these uh, deep freezes, but it has to do with the jet stream, where the jet stream is at the time. And right now, we're, we're on the edge of this, and we're, we're not getting nearly as cold weather, but this is uh, scary what's kind of happened here. Um, in fact, the electric electricity costs, I talked about this in the live stream before, but these are all record lows, uh, potential record lows, they're saying. Um, and we'll have to see how it pans out, whether those happen. But this Arctic air is pushed all the way down into even Mexico. You can see this. Uh, Georgia, uh, Alabama, and a few other states seem to be protected because this is the way the jet stream is moving here. Uh, tons of people that are out of power. Um, so they're talking about right now, ability is some companies generate the power has been frozen. This includes natural gas and coal generators. They're working to get it back online, but millions of people are without power. I was trying to see if they had something else here to show. Oh yeah, here's the jet stream. So right now, luckily the jet stream is uh, keeping the warmer weather uh, over on the East Coast, and, but it is dipping way down South. So right now, I guess I'm just trying to say, I hope you're learning from this lesson. If you're caught up in this stuff, you have to get some redundancies, you know, get you some kerosene heater if you have to. I mean, I've got that too. I've got uh, propane tanks, uh, portable protein, pro, sorry, propane tanks, but I also have propane tanks buried in the ground. I can have hot water even without power here. You know, I've got batteries for my uh, solar and everything and uh, right now our grid and everything is going to be more and more susceptible to these kinds of things right now we've gone with so much uh, solar and you know when the snow is blanking the solar blanketing the solar panels you're not going to generate any power uh, we've had days and days and days of rain here and so even that's not going to generate any power but we currently don't have our power interrupted 
but I do have a big old generator tied to a gas propane tank that I can recharge my batteries. So things like this, you're going to have to consider getting some redundancies uh, because this is a problem. Uh, even some of these emergency operations that they have where you can go to, uh, the roads may be impassable. So uh, it wouldn't surprise me we're going to have a lot of deaths out of this kind of stuff because people just are not prepared. Um, you've got to make sure you have some wood stocked up or something to be able to keep yourself from freezing. I've done a lot of videos, even like right here, heating with a wood stove for increased survivability during the Grand Solar Minimum. This was in 2018. And I talked about, showed the wood racks that I built and I've gone over these multiple times. I've shown uh, like my wood splitters. I have, uh, this is a small one that I have that I use for making kindling. And I show everything about heating with a wood stove. And I have two different types here. And it's, it's just fantastic. My house inside is 77 degrees. But anyways, the whole idea is to not be reliant on anybody. You want this, you want to be able to uh, survive. Uh, the government, you know, they got their own problems. They're, they're freaking incompetent. So don't count on, you know, these guys to bail you out. Now, some interesting things. I get a lot of comments. They think that silver's manipulated. And I wanted to show you that uh, this is a number of uh, uh, silver miners. And I found the all-in sustaining cost average is $5 an ounce. So if uh, silver was actually being manipulated, you would think these guys might be operating at a loss or something. But in fact, uh, these, all these miners are extremely profitable right now. I mean, silver is what, uh, 27 bucks or something? Let me see. Yeah, almost 28 bucks right now. In fact, we got a run up right now on silver that's happening in, in the evening. So right now, when I look at these prices, um, uh, and remember silver for the most part is a byproduct. So they're mining for copper, zinc, lead, that kind of stuff. And it's going to uh, be just kind of like a bonus when they bring it out of the ground. It's plentiful. There is no shortages except for the very few, like once a decade, you'll end up with a mania phase where people are kind of snookered into you know, bidding this thing up. And I keep telling you, you've got to buy or sell, you've got to sell into the mania phase because it will collapse because the smart money will start selling when it gets into the mania phase. It starts going parabolic. You sell into it because it collapses very fast because there's tons of silver that will move into the market and it will uh, collapse the price. So right now, it almost looks to me like silver is way overpriced based on what they're mining it at. Uh, they're put it, pulling plenty out of the ground. Uh, right now we just have some people speculating and that's what's going to drive it up. And that's another reason why it'll collapse because it's a pure speculation only. Now I did, uh, somebody had mentioned that they thought that uh, platinum and oil were running up about the same rate. So I went back and looked at, uh, we have this issue where they will always run the oil price down just before the election. And then uh, you'll notice it creeps right back up after the election. So here we're looking at uh, Brent crude, and this is the red line, and it's up 52% since the election. It just turns out that uh, platinum is up 49.9%, so almost the same. Silver's up 13% and gold is down 5% since that time period. So this is uh, really interesting when you look at this, but platinum has just in the last... Uh, uh, few weeks, platinum has really taken off from 25% to 50%. So this is, uh, this is something we're going to have to watch carefully, but we've busted through uh, 1300 on platinum now. And just five days ago, we bust through 1200. So it's starting to move pretty quick. I wanted to share with you this um, website that I found. I was in the market for a dress watch and there was one particular style that I found and I kept shopping, shopping, and I came across this Joma shop. And I ended up buying a watch and I was extremely happy with this. And I don't get any payment for this, but I just wanted to share with you. Sometimes I find some things that are quite interesting. And it turns out, I didn't even realize they had all kinds of stuff, handbags, sunglasses, and these are all the big name brand things. So let me show you something about this because, um, 
I was looking at uh, Bulova. There was a particular, and a lot of these watches that normally were being sold in the store for say 650 bucks on this is 349 bucks. Um, the one I uh, bought is a black and gold band. I'm not even sure it's on here anymore. There's 173 that they have here. But I wanted a dress watch for like my suits when I'm going out to nice places. Uh, similar to that, but it had a black band. Let me get the rest of them in here. I think I found it over here. Yeah, here it is. Anyways, this is on Bulova watches here, but I ended up buying this watch uh, probably close to the same price. It normally is a 450 bucks. Bulova has it here, but I found it on Joma shop. But anyways, if you go through Joma shop, you can find these very uh, nice watches. Um, I just needed a dress watch for you know going to nice things because all I have is something I got at Sam's Club that uh, has titanium and it's lasted forever. It's a Casio, but I wanted a nicer dress watch, and I just wanted you to be aware that there's companies like this uh, with uh, Joma shop, and there's all kinds of women's stuff up here too. If you go through. Uh, the top here and you look at like jewelry, handbags, uh, shoes, um, you might find something that's a really good gift. But they have like every different brand represented and I've been keeping my eye on uh, Citizens for, um, um, let me see if I can find it, Blue Angel, here it is. So this is something probably 10 years ago, I was looking to get one of these Blue Angels uh, Eco Drive, I think it's called. And uh, these things years ago were like 300 bucks and right now they're like 700. And, but you can get it for 380 on here. These are, you know, but this is kind of like a lifetime watch. You get something like this, it will, it will last you a lifetime. Now it turns out uh, when you look at it on the back of this, this has the Blue Angels emblem and it's a, it's a really nice stylish watch. But I just wanted you to know these are, these are things that I kind of look for occasionally. And I haven't had, truthfully, a super nice watch like that dress watch I showed you earlier, this Bulova, probably for 20 years. And so uh, I, de I decided this is something that uh, would be nice. So anyways, I wanted to share that with you. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are. Um, I'm always... In, a lot of these are kind of like currency too. Uh, they are they hold their value very nicely, and there's a a uh, used market out there for these things. So if you if you buy something nice, it actually can be used uh, for some form of currency as well. So I wanted to give you some alternatives. I hope everybody's treating you well. I hope you're doing well. Do the best you can. God bless. All right, go party. We gonna go bye bye? Are we gonna go bye bye? And we gonna go bye bye? <coughs> we gonna go bye bye? <coughs> yeah, all right. <coughs> you going to get in the car? We're not quite ready. I'm almost ready. You almost ready? Okay.